Hello to all our subscribers at YouTube. Uh, I want to thank you for all your nice comments on our videos. I know a lot of you have been going to our other site that exists away from YouTube, our mathtv.com site, and some of you have asked, as that site gets more and more videos, are we going to continue to put videos on YouTube? And the answer is yes. We're going to continue to put videos on YouTube no matter what we do with the mathtv.com site. So keep coming back to, to YouTube and you'll see more and more videos. Okay, what I want to do here is I want to simplify this square root, 49x squared, assuming that x is greater than or equal to 0. So x is a positive number or 0. So a uh, pretty simple problem right here, but a lot of times students are wondering, why are you going to all this trouble to put this restriction on here? I know how to simplify square root 49x squared. Well, I'm not sure if that's actually true. There's a reason why this restriction is here, so I want to talk about that a little bit first. Okay, so what I have here, suppose that x is uh, greater than or equal to 0, that is, x is a positive number, for instance, a number like 12. Let's see what happens when we take the square root of 12 squared. Well, that's going to be the square root of 144, and then when I take the positive square root of 144, pretty simple, I just get 12. So what's nice about this is that the number I started with, 12, is exactly the same as the number I ended up with over here, 12. So the square root of 12 squared just turns out to be 12, pretty easy. Now, here's the case where x is less than 0. What if x is a negative number, for instance, like negative 12? I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take the square root of negative 12 squared. Okay. So when I do that, I get the square root of negative 12 squared is a positive 144. So that's positive 144. Now this is an easy problem, square root of 144, just like I did before, the positive square root of that is 12. But the problem is this, the number I end up with, 12, is not the number that I started with, negative 12. When I take the square root of negative 12 squared, I don't get negative 12, I get positive 12. So what can I do so that when I simplify this, I end up with an expression that involves this negative 12? And the answer is, it's easy. All I have to do is take the opposite of negative 12. Now I can see the number I started with right here, negative 12, is the same as the number I, uh, the number I end up with over here. This negative 12 is written in terms of the number I started with, negative 12. So the square root of negative 12 squared turns out to be the opposite of negative 12, which is positive 12. Okay, so I want to summarize this with a little definition now. Suppose that x can be any real number, positive or negative. How can I write the square root of x squared? Well, I'm going to say this. The square root of x squared is going to be just x itself if x is greater than or equal to 0. So when x is a positive number, the square root of x squared just comes out to be x, just like we did over here with the square root of 12 squared. But when x is a negative number, so if x is less than 0, I don't end up with 12 right here, or I mean, I don't end up with 12, I end up with 12 right here, which is the opposite of my negative 12. So when x is a negative number, the square root of x squared isn't x, it's negative x. So the square root of x squared, when x is a negative number, turns out to be the opposite of x. Now here's the thing you have to understand. The way this definition is written right here, this expression, definitely a positive number. The opposite of x is a positive number the way this is written right here because x itself is negative. So the x itself is negative and this means I'm taking its opposite. And the opposite of a negative number is always positive. So the, one of the things you want to realize right away is that this is a positive number. So I want to ask you, with this definition right here, what other function does exactly the same thing? Okay, I'll tell you the answer. The answer is the absolute value function. The absolute value of x is x itself when x is positive or 0, and the absolute value of x is negative x when x is less than 0. So the definition for the square root of x squared, you can write this whole thing out right here, or you can just say it's the absolute value of x. So what does that have to do with this problem I'm doing right here? Well, in this problem, I want the square root of 49x squared, assuming that x is a positive number. So I'm in this category right here, which means that my answer is simply going to be 7x. So the answer to that problem is 7x, but there's a lot more to it, because if I erase this right here, 
and I don't have this restriction on the variable x, I just ask you for the square root of 49x squared and you don't know anything else about x, then the correct answer to this problem is 7 absolute value of x. So a lot of times what we do when people are taking their first class in algebra, we just say, look, anytime there's a square root and you have a variable underneath, just assume it's a positive number. That way we don't have to worry about any of this stuff right here. And this can be a little confusing the first time you see it. So if you are confused by looking at this right here, that's okay. That's part of the process. It will get better the farther you go in algebra. But if you're just starting out in algebra, you're in an elementary algebra class, and the book says, assume that all variables under a square root are positive, or your instructor tells you the same thing, then you're okay. You don't need this absolute value right here. The square root of 49x squared would just be 7x, as long as you know that x is a positive number.